My name is Louis-Philippe Boulay. I'm a respirologist at the Laval University Heart and Lung Institute in Quebec City, Canada. We will talk today about the diagnosis of asthma. The diagnosis of asthma requires both a history of characteristic respiratory symptoms and evidences of variable airflow limitation. In asthma, symptoms may vary over time and in intensity, and they usually include wheezing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, flank production, and cough. Typically, the symptoms are worse at night or in the early morning. They vary over time and in intensity, and they are triggered by, for example, viral respiratory infections, exercise, allergen exposure, changes in weather, laughter, or irritants such as car exhaust fumes, smoke, and strong smells. If the symptoms are not typical of asthma, an alternative diagnosis should be considered. If there is a clinical urgency and other diagnoses are unlikely, an empiric treatment with inhaled corticosteroids and short-acting bronchodilator could be offered, but the response to the treatment should be reviewed and the diagnosis confirmed later. So, if a detailed history and examination for asthma features support the diagnosis of asthma, then variable expiratory airflow limitation, which means that the expiratory lung function varies over time and in magnitude to a greater extent than in healthy population, should be documented to confirm the diagnosis of asthma. Spirometry, which measure expiratory volume in one second, the FEV1, and forced vital capacity, the FVC, is the preferred initial test. Sometimes, repeated measurements of peak expiratory flow could help. If there is airway obstruction, the ratio of FEV1 over FVC will be lower than its usual value usually greater than 0.75 to 0.80 in adults and 0.90 in children. So any values less than these suggest airflow limitation. Once this is established, the reversibility of airflow limitation should be confirmed. A significant reversibility means at least a change in FEV1 of more than 12%, and 200 ml in adults after the inhalation of salbutamol 200 to 400 microgram or after a four weeks of anti-inflammatory treatment outside of respiratory infections. Compare, of course, to baseline. If peak expiratory flow measures are used, a significant reversibility means a greater than 10% variability in adults or 13% in children when they are measured twice daily over a period of two weeks or by a change of more than 20% over a period of four weeks of anti-inflammatory treatment outside of respiratory infections. This is always compared to baseline, of course. If expiratory flows are normal, such as in mild asthma sometimes, a bronchoprovocation test can be used to detect the presence of airway hyperresponsiveness, which also supports the diagnosis of asthma. This is most often established with inhaled metacoline, but histamine, exercise, eucapnic voluntary apropnea, or inhaled manitol may also be used. We should check the criteria for a positive test, but of course we have to remind that these tests are moderately sensitive for a diagnosis of asthma while they have a limited specificity. Otherwise, some centers now have the possibility to measure a key feature of asthma, which is airway inflammation, but induced sputum analysis or fractional concentration of exhaled nitric oxide analysis also uh, is not sufficient to make the diagnosis of asthma. Airway hyperresponsiveness and airway inflammation can be present in other diseases, so the global clinical presentation should be considered 
for establishing the diagnosis. If there are any doubts about the diagnosis of asthma or if the tests required are not available, a treatment trial can be considered for the patient or it can be referred for further investigation. Finally, we should mention that allergy skin prick tests with common environmental allergens may help to identify those allergens to which the patient is allergic to, but it does not confirm uh, the diagnosis of asthma. In addition, the differential diagnosis of, in a patient with suspected asthma varies with age and in addition to sometimes mimic asthma, any of these alternative diagnoses may also be found together with asthma.